All right, so we'll make a left here on Lake Mori Road. And Lake Mori is right up there. All right, let's pull into the Fairly Town Beach parking lot right over there. Okay, sounds good. All right, so this isn't a very large lake here in eastern Vermont. No, no. In fact, it was originally named Fairly Pond after the town, but it was renamed Lake Mori after a local man who invented the steamboat. Wait, 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 wait. I may not have memorized every historical fact fed to me as a kid, but I do recall a school project where I learned Robert Fulton invented the steamboat in 1807. Mm, Yeah, yep, yep. Fulton does get the credit, but there's some locals here who would argue that that's just not right which is why maybe Lake Maury is haunted by a ghostly boat and the man who invented it. Hey, I'm Jeff Belanger. And I'm Ray Ozier. Welcome to episode 236 of the New England Legends podcast. If you give us about 10 minutes, we'll give you something strange to talk about today. We are so glad you joined us on our mission to chronicle every legend in New England, one story at a time. We're a community of legend seekers who love sharing odd history, mysteries, and you know, general weirdness with each other. So please do subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcast because it's free. And please tell a friend or two about us and post a review for us. Yeah. We're not some big podcast network. We count on you to help us spread the word. That we do. Also, thanks for the great feedback on the new segment we've added to the end of the podcast, the Post Legend Riff. Uh, Be sure to listen after the credits to check it out. Now, before we go searching for the ghost of a man and the ghost of a boat here on Lake Maury, Vermont... We want to take just a minute to thank our Patreon patrons. For years now, our Patreon patrons have been an exclusive group of insiders who have supported our show and community. Between our podcast, website, Facebook group, and the New England Legends app, we've got a lot to take care of. So we really do appreciate those of you who can show your support with your wallets. For just three bucks per month, our patrons get early access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear. To sign up, just head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends. Would appreciate it. All right, Jeff. So Lake Maury in Vermont is haunted by a man and a boat? <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. Locals speak of a strange-looking ghostly boat seen out near the middle of the lake. All right, again, it's, it's not that big of a lake. You can practically see the whole thing from where we're standing. Right. And then there's the angry and frustrated ghost of Samuel Maury who's been spotted on the shore. Now, to find out why... Let's head back to 1793, the earliest days of the town of Fairley, and meet Samuel Maury. It's the spring of 1793, and inventor Samuel Maury is tinkering in his workshop. Maury's busy building a steam-powered engine. For years, he'd been heating his house with a device that has been powered by turpentine combined with water and air. He called it water gas. Wait, no, turpentine is pretty flammable. Well, you don't have to tell Maury that. One day, his mixture got too hot and exploded. Was everyone okay? Yeah, I mean, not much damage was done, but that explosion gave Maury an idea. If that explosion could be controlled and contained in something like a cylinder, that explosion could fire a piston. And boom, you have an internal combustion engine. Maury files a patent and gets it. Check out the signatures on his patent, Jeff. Wow. It's signed by President George Washington and by Thomas Jefferson. Not bad, Mr. Morey. So Samuel Morey has this idea of attaching an internal combustion steam engine to drive a boat. If he can pull it off, he can revolutionize travel and commerce. The idea of using steam power dates back centuries, but the first commercial continuous power piston steam engine was invented by Thomas Newcomen in 1712. Now, the idea is pretty simple. You burn a fire, the fire heats the water, which creates steam. The steam pushes up a cylinder that drives a piston. The piston can then power whatever you need, be it factory machines or or what have you. Now, other inventors have made improvements on the engine over the past 80 years, but one of the biggest problems is, well, size. These engines are huge, which is no problem for a factory, but a big problem for a boat. But with Maury's smaller internal combustion steam engine, he thinks he can make it small enough to fit on a boat, but powerful enough to drive a paddle wheel. There's a lot of math going on right now. So Maury is building a paddle wheel onto the sides of a boat called the Aunt Sally. He describes the boat as 19 feet long and five and a half feet wide. But the paddle wheel is causing him a lot of problems. Why is that? So the wheel causes a lot of torque on the boat. But after a lot of headaches, Maury believes he's got the ratios and positioning just right. He attaches his internal combustion steam engine 
and he's ready for a test. It's a Sunday morning when Maury launches the Aunt Sally for a test on the Connecticut River, just a short distance away from Fairley Pond. The thought is, everyone is at church right now, so if this test is a failure, there won't be too many witnesses. The engine starts, and pretty soon the Aunt Sally is chugging along the Connecticut River. The first steamship is moving. Maury takes his boat up and down the river, and he's getting a lot of attention along the way. It would seem that the world is about to change. It's 1797 when financier Robert R. Livingston invites Samuel Maury to New Jersey. Livingston is ready to financially back a new type of boat with a paddle wheel on the side driven by a steam engine. A prototype is built, and Maury believes a new steamship company, fame, and fortune will soon follow. Of course he believes that. I mean, Maury's engine can power these large boats up and down rivers, even against the current. Imagine shipping cargo this way along the rivers, and think of how much more mobile people can become now. This is the dawn of a new age. So where's the new steamship company? Yeah, where is it? Robert Livingston passes the idea and design for a side paddle wheel steamship onto his business partner. I mean, no patents have been filed, so I guess this thing is up for grabs. It's Livingston's business partner who eventually builds a steam-powered boat called the Clermont. The boat is a huge commercial success. It's the Clermont that launches a steamship company, patents are filed, and fame and fortune now seems inevitable for Livingston and his business partner come 1807. Meanwhile, back in Fairleigh, Vermont, Samuel Morey is despondent. He's watching his design and his ideas make other people rich and famous. In a fit of anger, he launches the Aunt Sally out to the center of Fairley Pond and sinks the boat to the bottom, scuttling the ship. He swims to shore on a plank of wood and walks away dejected. Man, oh man, that's awful. I can't imagine having my work stolen like that. It happens all the time. Anyway, the name of Robert Livingston's business partner? None other than Robert Fulton, the man credited with inventing the steamship. And that brings us back to today. Of all the low-down, dirty deeds. I know, right? I had no idea someone else invented the steamship first. They say on certain days, maybe with a little fog drifting across Lake Maury, you can see the outline of a peculiar-looking boat with paddle wheels on the side. The boat makes no sound and causes no ripples in the water. And then it disappears. But I guess that would be the Aunt Sally. Right. And at the same time, pacing the shores, the specter of a man has been spotted around the lake. Wow, which would be Samuel Morey standing by the water that bears his name, where his greatest triumph sits at the bottom. The story haunts anyone who's ever made any kind of living with their ideas. I mean, to have your work stolen is horrible and hurtful. Then to watch that same person get rich off your idea, it's more than some people can take. So Samuel Morey died here in Fairley, Vermont back in 1843, at the age of 80. He lived long enough to watch steamships become huge and change the way the world travels. And he watched Robert Fulton get all the credit. He had to swallow that bitter pill every time he watched a steamship motor by on the nearby Connecticut River. That would have made me nuts, too. Back in the fall of 1991, some divers exploring the bottom of Lake Maury discovered the remains of a large boat. They believed they may have found the Aunt Sally. The salvage diver planned to try to raise the remains of the boat and sell it, but the state of Vermont informed him that as soon as the boat was raised, since it's a historical artifact, it would become property of the state. When the salvage diver offered to raise the ship for the state for a fee, Vermont declined. So we can't be certain that the remains found are the Aunt Sally. No, we can't. It's roughly the right size and shape, and judging from the amount of rot, it dates to about the right time, but we don't know. There's also some debate if Maury truly scuttled his boat on purpose or if there was some kind of accident. The thought being, what kind of Yankee would destroy something that still works? And now we're left with the story and the ghosts of Lake Maury. Maybe Vermonters keep the ghost of Samuel Morey and his boat around because it's a point of pride that one of the biggest innovations 
and transportation started right here. Please be sure to share our episodes on your social media pages. Help build our community. We appreciate your help. We also appreciate it when you reach out to us. We love hearing from you. You can email us through our website, reach out to us on our social media, or call or text our legend line anytime at 617-444-9683. So many of our story leads come from you. We'd like to thank our Patreon patrons, and our theme music is by John Judd. All right, Ray, you ready for a little post-legend riff? I sure am. Got my coffee in front of me, ready to uh, listen, sip, and interject when I can. Please, <laughs> right. So this this one hits home for me. Yeah. I've had That's ideas exactly. stolen. Um, I've been had my books plagiarized. I've seen articles I've written online end up in other people's books. I've heard stuff I've said in interviews end up in uh, people's, you know, lectures and stuff. It's happened to me a lot. Even seeing things on TV that I'm like, oh, I did that first. I guess I haven't done anything significant enough to rip off. (laughs) So I was racking my brain. You know what it is, though? Sometimes um, I'll see a movie and I I had thought of that idea years ago. I had thought of bringing back the uh, teen slasher horror genre before Scream did. And I even wrote a really bad screenplay. Nice. So the idea was there, sat on it. And then Scream came on. I'm like, huh. Yeah. And then everybody obviously reproduced it after that, and it was too late. So there's a saying that I've heard, not just in like entertainment, but uh, around, right? There's no new ideas, which always bothers me because it seems like some people say that because it, you feel justified to rip off anything you want. Well, sure. you didn't really invent that. There's no new ideas. Somebody did it before you, yeah. Right. Well, I don't know. I sort of disagree. You know, I mean, like you ever try some food and you're like, oh, no one's quite put the ingredients together this way before, right? Yeah. right? I mean, of course. And that's that's a new idea. It may feel like the same, but right. there was a lot of originality behind it. Yeah. Uh, how many songs have the chords G, C, and D in them? <laughs> it's how you use them. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, yeah. But like, it's it's the rhythm. It's how you use them. It's your melody, right? But but so you can't say like, well, I, you know, that's why I, I have I stole that song. Like, no. Right. Right? That, that someone did that. And when that. you add the combinations of notes and chords and vocals and lyrics right. and structure, there's billions of ways you could do that song. So original. Right. Yeah. And, and make it your own. So anyway, today uh, there's a Vermont road marker right near the lake, uh, Maury Lake, Lake Maury, <laughs> that tells the story. Uh, this I'm reading right off the sign here. It says... Samuel Morey, resident of Orford, New Hampshire, and later Fairley, Vermont, successfully operated a steamboat on the Connecticut River in 1793. Making over 4,000 experiments, this early scientist patented an internal combustion engine in 1826 to anticipate the age of the motor car and the airplane. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, he's got a sign. But what's funny is like, I mean, I, I mean, I, it's Robert Fulton invented the steam engine. You That's just, what we learned. We learned it, right. right? That's, we know that. And then when you hear the story and you're like, oh man, Fulton may have ripped somebody off. What's Fulton's story though? Did he have a better story for the history books? I can't remember. Or, or just, you know, I mean, <clears throat> maybe it was the right timing. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I know, um, you know, different people working on the light bulb yeah. when Edison oh, was, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and um, there was there was alternating current and direct current. And, mm. and there was big debates, like, what's the world going to use, right? You, you're going to have to pick one. Right. And um, and so uh, sometimes it's just a flip of a coin. Sometimes it's luck or whatever. And, and then we remember one person and we forget the other who, who was right there. And, you know, their ideas were the one that, that was improved just one little bit right. uh, to, to be the thing you everybody knows. Um, but the thing is, like, I mean, it's important to note, Maury lived to be 80 years old. It's mm. a pretty ripe age. At that know, time. And those yeah. times, you know. And so, um, and he had other patents filed in his in his name. I mean, it's not like he, he led a life. It's not like he threw his hands up after that. This but, didn't ruin him. No, it didn't. He kept doing what he does, for sure. But it ruined him enough where he sank the boat. He was that upset about it. Yeah, so that's the <laughs> other thing. There, there's some debate over, like, well, would he really just go scuttle his boat? Like, would he do, wh- why would you do that? Yeah, I um, mean, who are you getting? back at for doing that right and so there's debate over whether it was just an accident and and that's what the legend turned into mm. or whether it was just because it's it's easy to imagine like because you're like well that's what i would do <laughs> right <laughs> right like damn you fulton i can't believe it right like you guys are, are rich and, and imagine you know you're sitting on the connecticut river one summer's day and you're, you're sipping your 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 cold beer Probably some good micro brew that didn't exist yet, <laughs> you know. And, and then here comes this steamship, like you know, chugging up the river. And you're looking, you're like, oh, you start, oh, Dad's twitching, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like he's, he's twitching again. Yeah. 
know, you, know, you do take the Aunt Sally out there because you just don't want a reminder that yeah. that could have been me that everybody knows and, you know, and, and making all that money. And uh, It's so. tough. I mean, it's got to be tough. Of course. I mean, I didn't. I mean, I just wrote a silly screenplay. Yeah. And it did bother me that, man, somebody else had this idea before me. They didn't, obviously, right. didn't steal anything from me. Yeah. And that's happened a few times in my life where you have a thought and then you see it, like, a week later. Shoot. I mean, so, I mean, radio morning shows, like, you've been oh, doing that God. a long time, right? And you're just like... The well, at this point, I steal everything I can from people. <laughs> I, I, everyone should know Ray actually invented the crank call. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. I mean, morning shows will do that, but yeah. that originated somewhere else. Someone. Long right? time ago. Yeah, of course. And nobody can claim that as their own. And you know what's even worse? And I'm going to sh- give you a little secret about radio. Oh, no. right. A lot of those phone calls are canned. Oh, I know. I actually. And they're getting it from a prep service. Yeah. So you could hear it in Boston. You could hear the same call in L.A. Yeah. and in Austin, Texas. It's just it's one of those things that goes out to all these high high end morning shows. Uh, I'll make it worse. I've got a buddy who is an actor <laughs> on, on some go. of those calls, and so like uh, he's played like the the boyfriend that gets caught cheating. Yeah. Right, and then they just tear him apart. Right, like you no good s- sob, and oh, how dare you? And we busted you, and, 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 and he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Right, like he, he didn't cheat. It wasn't. It was. He's just an actor. And there's usually a script that goes along with yeah. it. Oh my it's, God, we're it's ruining crazy. everything right now. Sometimes you get, it's canned. Yeah. So I don't know if your guy's doing it live. No, it's canned. Okay, so, so you, you get it recorded and then you have to react to the script based on their reaction. Right. And it, it sounds like it's live. Because if you screw up the script, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not raining here. <laughs> right, <laughs> what, what? exactly. Wait, oh, no. I'm lost oh, in my shoot. notes. Sorry, wait, we got to try this again. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the thing. But yeah, no, I, I mean- you know, come on, every innovation, uh, I, and I get how sometimes we improve other ideas that we've right. seen, but but sometimes, especially this, like, you know, this guy built something, and someone else is like, oh, paddle wheel in the middle of the boat. That makes sense for, like, propulsion and sure. torque or whatever. Of course, in balance. later years. Balance, right. In later years, when you when you picture a, a river steamboat, the paddle wheel's in the back. <laughs> right. Right, like the big Mississippi River, you know, steamboats yeah. and stuff. Um, but, uh, but it's something that he had been working on uh, his whole career, uh, yeah. Samuel Morey. And um, I, I love the idea that this ghost can, uh, like the, the lake being haunted, makes you ask, well, why is it haunted? Right. And then you learn about a guy that, and you're like, oh, man, so the steamship really might have been originated right here at this little pond slash lake. Um, yeah, not only do you have a legend on right. that lake, but you have actual history now, yeah, perhaps, right. on that lake. Where you're, and you're just like, oh, landmarks. that's a wrong, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, someone was horribly wronged here, and, and, uh, and I love that. By the way, we learned this in um, uh, our Haunted Lake episode way back when in New Hampshire. New mm. Hampshire, there's a lake called Haunted Lake. Great story. We yeah. did a podcast on it. Um, it. It got me looking. I'm like, who, who decides the difference between a lake and a pond? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. It, it, so we, we dug in. Volume, into, uh, no, area. There's abso- nothing. Nothing. It's, it's up to a town or it's up to each community. To what sounds better in the name? Right. Like, like Pond or Maury Pond. Eh. Right. Lake Maury. Lake, Ooh, that sounds a little brighter. Sounds bigger. Yeah. Sounds, sounds like bigger. But a than lake West. would sound bigger anyway. So why wouldn't you name your pond a lake? But maybe pond is quaint. You're in a small little town. Fairly Let's go pond. fishing at the pond. It was called Fairly Pond. It's calming, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Fairly Maury pond. Lake is huge. Ooh. That's big. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he's uh so anyway, it's uh, it's sort of arbitrary. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's obvious if it's yeah. not that big, you just call it a pond, but there's no definition that once once it's this many hectares or whatever, <laughs> you know. Um so yeah, it went from pond to lake and then got a guy's name and I feel like unless you see that sign, that historical marker, you just say like, oh, yeah, Lake Maury. I don't know. Like, right. It's a, it's a place. Um, they have a big deal going on in the winter. They have um, uh, an, an ice skating trail. So they actually like clear a trail all around the perimeter of the lake. Mm. And tons of people go there. And it, it's, it's, you know, it's quite a distance if you, if you do the whole circle. Right. You know? And so lots of people ice skate there. They ice fish. And it's, you know, it's a pretty little lake in a quaint little town right there on the Vermont, New Hampshire border. Nice. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, the idea of getting ripped off just man that that struck a chord with me because like you know I've watched TV shows where I was like oh and and I and I know the people involved in the TV shows. Well, because you do a lot of presenting of your yeah. ideas to people, right? And, Producers and people well, that are making things happen. And, and those people are sometimes in my audiences, you know. And then you see it and you're like, oh, where'd you get that idea? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. You're like, wow, man, like that's just. Did I meet you I, like a month ago? We had this conversation, didn't we? Some of these people There's I know. Screen. Yeah, that's R- tough, right? And you're like it's cutthroat uh, business. It is, and so I, I guess for me, I'm like, well, I'll just have to 
make more ideas. Well, you have to record every conversation you have with every person. <laughs> Excuse well, me, would you mind if we uh, videotape our conversation? Right, yeah, right, just because I, <laughs> I think you're going to rip me off at some point. But, um, but no, I get it, and it, it makes you bitter. But, I mean, you can either stew on that or you can just keep inventing. Well, the good thing is you know you're going in the right direction if your ideas are yeah. being used. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> I picture that in my next pitch meeting. Just be like, hey, you've stolen like like seven of my <laughs> ideas. Why don't you just go to the source now, right? Right. I mean- You liked those enough. I've got more. Let's cut out the, the, the middle people on, on this <laughs> and uh, go right to the source. Um, but no, it's cool. Like I said, you, you can get like super bitter about it and there's days where you get mad and- you know, maybe you you throw a few pillows around, but uh, <laughs> wow, you get really angry at home, huh? <laughs> I've punched walls before. You throw pillows, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, you know, you, you got to pay to fix the wall. <laughs> the pillow, you just pick it up. That's I don't true. Know. All but right. Anyway, hey, till next time. Remember, the bazaar is closer than you think. <laughs>